Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back in to some more bite-sized business advice. I have a very special guest today, and we're going to talk about a topic that is a hot button in the business world, the entrepreneurship world, and that is manifestation. We're going to talk about how you can just think beautiful thoughts and say pretty words out loud and get anything you want in your life. It's going to be beautiful. Rachel, am I am I close to what we're going to talk about today? Well, we are going to be talking about manifesting, but we're going to be talking about maybe why it's not such a good idea. That is what we're going to talk about. And we're I'm excited to dive in here. Um, we're going to be talking about the the not so sexy side of manifesting that might actually be hurting you in more ways than you think. So um, I'm, I'm excited to welcome my guest in, Rachel. Before we go any further, welcome in and thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So Rachel, uh, we met, we're actually from the same city, the Raleigh area uh, here in North Carolina. And we just struck up a conversation and said, hey, you're, we're each doing interesting things in the world. I'm curious to hear your take about growing a business, Rachel, with a biblical foundation. And that is what you teach in your community. So we are mm -hmm. not talking about manifestation in the way that you probably typically heard it. But we're going to talk about from a biblical perspective, what does it say? What are the dangers? And and really, how do you do it the right way? So, Rachel, I'm I'm excited to dive in here. Let's um let's clear the air, though. Can we separate manifestation in the traditional sense to what we're really talking about today in your own words? Sure. So the way that I'm defining manifestation, I think people can kind of start to mix this up with other things. So the way that I would define manifestation is it's the idea that through regular affirmation and positive thought, we can actually cause things to come into reality. So it's really closely connected to what's called the law of attraction, which says that basically the energy that you're putting out into the universe, the universe will like send that same energy back. So it's almost like karma where it's like, if you put out good vibes into the universe, if you like really believe and really dream and think into existence, the fact that your business is going to be a success, then it will be a success. Um, I think what we want to uh, separate it from is positive thought um, or even affirmations. There can be biblical ways to like use scripture to affirm things that are actually true. So I'm not talking about that. And I'm not talking about even the power of thinking positively. There's some scriptural basis for that as well. So we're not not talking about that, more of the idea of like, you can actually cause something to come into existence through your thought. Yeah. And I think, so that's, that's exactly what's, what's typically uh, preached to kind of use a, a bad way to use that word. But that's what, that's what common is the common theme in entrepreneurship is if you think positively, if you recite things over and over out loud, you're putting it out and it will come back to you. Um, yeah. So tell me where, because on the surface that it kind of seems like a good thing. Right. And that's why I think a lot of people mm -hmm. go down this path and they do it. And listen, full disclosure here, like guilty. I have done this in the past. We've done, the, we've all done the affirmations and the positive thinking and the journaling, whatever it is. So what, what is the dangerous side of this from a biblical perspective? Yeah. So I think just real quick, why I think it can work is because, our thoughts do have power. We are called to take every thought captive. Um, and like, there's also this principle of like sowing and reaping in scripture. So that part is true. Um, I think why manifesting starts to be a problem is uh, that it really trusts in an impersonal universe instead of a personal God. And as Christians, we say, no, the Lord actually knows me personally. He created me uniquely. And so I'm not like there's not this entity out there called the universe that's causing things um, to come to me. That actually is part of mysticism and it's very anti-Christian. Um, but we actually serve a God who gives good gifts to us generously. Um, so yeah, 
it also can start to lead us to give glory to ourselves instead of to God, because then when we have success, then we start to think, okay, like that came from me. I brought that into existence. I thought this up. I dreamed this up and I, I manifested it. Um, a verse <laughs> that talks about this is actually Deuteronomy 8, 17 through 19. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. James talks about this too. Um, Psalm 115, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. So we don't want the glory to be going to us when we have success in our business. We want that to go to the Lord. And then uh, there's two more things that I think can be problematic with it. One, it leads you to believe that you have control that you actually don't have. Um, this is James, uh, what I was just talking about. Um, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we'll go to the city or that, spend a year there, carry on business and make a profit. So this is actually talking about business. This is very applicable for us. Uh, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And then lastly, I think that it can really start to breed like envy, discontent, and entitlement um, because we'll look at other people and we're, we'll be like, well, I like their bougie life. Why can't I have that bougie life too? And uh, James also talks about this. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your own pleasures. So I have to recognize I'm not promised by God that I will have a successful business. I am promised that he is good to me and I can work really hard. And I think that wealth building is a really important thing in scripture, um, but I'm not promised that I'm going to have a successful business. And so we don't want to have this be like this idol in our heart where it's like, okay, now I have to have this or I'm going to be discontent and envious of other people. Mm, and I think that that word right there is what I've kind of picked up on through the technique of manifestation as you will if you will is idol and idolatry which is mm -hmm. obviously spoken against in the bible very heavily uh, especially in the old testament and when we start to put our goals and our desires ahead of everything else in our lives that is a form of idolatry and it's not i don't think it's typically what comes to mind when we hear that word because we're thinking in the context of the bible other gods right Right, you see right. that throughout scripture is you are idolizing other and worshiping other gods. Well, you are doing that when you worship dollars, when you worship goals, when you worship business, when you worship celebrities, like all of these different things. And I think the other thing you said at the beginning of that response, which uh, was so great, was you think you do it. You're mm -hmm. ultimately, ultimately making yourself an idol as well because you're worshiping your ability to do things. So that was so perfectly said by you and thank you for all those those separate points <clears throat> excuse me the um the thing that i want to kind of explore now is like if if this is not the way to go because let's just agree between between rachel and me like we're just going to tell you straight up don't do this <laughs> if you walk away with nothing else don't do this um but moving forward what what should we be doing in this place because there are actually very very powerful scriptures i i don't have them in front of me you don't either we could put some in the show notes too but what are some ways we can move forward and do this from a biblical perspective and in a way that honors god and doesn't make us or anything else an idol in our lives mm -hmm. yeah well i mean first i think an obvious one for most of us is actually just pray like prayer over your business is so much more powerful than manifesting ever will be. Um, you don't need to manifest. You have a God who is listening to every word you say, who cares about you, who you have access to his throne room. So go and ask him, take your request to him and say, you know, Lord, I want this business to be successful. Will you please help me? And that is so much better. Like it reminds me of that C.S. Lewis quote that's like, says something like, uh, we are far too easily pleased. I think that really applies to this where it's like, we are far too easily pleased. We're settling if we settle for manifestation. Uh, we have a God who cares about us. And then also uh, go to the word, go to scripture, um, meditate on what's actually true of you from scripture. Uh, <clears throat> 
also build on the foundation, which is Jesus. It's interesting. Um, I'm going to read a verse here that's a little bit long, but um, hold on, because it actually talks about manifesting, um, but in a different way than how we talk about it. Um, no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Um, this is 1 Corinthians 3. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has done has built on the if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So the point of this is like, there is a manifestation that's going to happen. And that's on the last day when it's going to be determined if you actually built your business on the foundation of Christ or not. Did we just build it on our own selfishness? Or is it something that actually has kingdom impact that we are allowing, uh, that we're inviting God into and that he's a part of? Um, yeah, like that's that's the manifestation we should be worried about. <laughs> Did we actually build it on Jesus? I agree. And it's it's tough to it's tough to do that and put ourselves aside sometimes because the other thing the Bible specifically doesn't say is that you will have success in all of your doings, that you will even have happiness. And mm -hmm. these can be hard to digest because we think that if we if we pray, if we ask, if we march according to the plan and we do our part, all things will come to us. But on the other side, you know, it's very, very clear in the Bible that God works for us that doesn't always mean that we get what we want. And sometimes the business failure might be for you. The lost client mm -hmm. might be for you. The mm -hmm. lost revenue might be for you. So mm -hmm. how do you, when you're working with your clients and, and you're kind of teaching people about this, how do you help people understand and digest that if it's the first time they're hearing it? Mm. Yeah. Hardship. <laughs> I call it the anvil of entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is like being on an anvil. It's like you have a magnifying glass on you and it's hard. It's part of the sanctification process that God will put you through. If you choose to have a business, it's like inviting a, a more difficult life. <laughs> um, and that is actually a really amazing opportunity though, because it causes us to really grow and it causes us to really lean into the Lord. And like for me personally, business is where my self-reliance rears its ugly head the most. Like by far, my sanctification has shot through the roof since going into business more than my marriage. I don't know if it's more than having kids, but it's right up there. Like <laughs> it's hard, but hardship is actually a blessing especially when it's forcing us to grow and forcing us to rely on the Lord and forcing us to recognize, I can't do this in my own strength. And we see the Lord like really work in us when we come to the end of ourselves and we say, I need you really badly for this. Um, it's just a beautiful thing to experience. Uh, very well said. I, I agree. I don't know about the kid piece though. So here's what came up in my head when you said when you said the kid versus business. Like kids, in theory, you could go on vacation for three weeks, three months, leave the kids somewhere else with a with a trusted guardian. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> please, can we do that in business? A lot. I mean, that's so that's what we help our clients with is getting them further and further away from their businesses. But a mm -hmm. lot of times that's that's very rare that we could step away from our business for that long and and have no contact with it and not suffer consequences not that you wouldn't with your kids either but is yeah. it I, it's hard to run a business and it's probably even harder yeah. to do it with biblical principles mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but it's worth it and that's the message that both of us are are trying to echo here today so um i'm curious how you start to go about this with with your clients like what do you do to help them set up their businesses for success and to build on bible biblical truths to build that foundation for their business yeah well a lot of it goes to really clear goal setting i think this is a really good um alternative to manifesting because part of the problem with manifesting 
something that I realized I was falling into, even though I never officially practiced manifesting, was I started to fall into the idea of like, well, if I just um, am positive enough about my business and I just hold on and I just keep doing it, then eventually success is just going to come to me. And it was kind of like this manifesting, like subtly coming into my thinking. And what that is, is uh, it's a passive way of looking at success. Success is something that you can work for. And the hard thing as Christians is that it's, it is out of our control, just like James was talking about. Right. So we're in this, we're living in this tension of, I know that God is going to bring me success. I know that it's outside of my control. And also I have a part in it. I need to work for it and I need to be faithful. And so with both of those things held together, I think a really good way to kind of just uh, like put manifesting aside, um, hold both of those two things well in tension with each other um, is to create good, solid goals and my favorite personal uh, goal setting system is actually called the rooted goal setting system. And it is based on a Christian worldview and it really helps you to build out um, business goals that go with your life. So your regular life and your business aren't like fighting all the time. <laughs> That's a, can you elaborate on that at all? Or is that a, a tra trade secret? You can't. No, yeah. So my friend is actually the one who built it out. She's a homeschooling mom, also an entrepreneur. And she had to find a way of building out goals that um, that aligned with her faith and also allowed for her to live, you know, do all the wear all the hats. Right. And so it's it's a it's an acronym. It, st it stands for rooted in your core calling. So you first figure out like, what am I uniquely designed by God to do? Um, what are the skill sets that I have? What are ways that I know how to make money and um, all those things. And then organically growing out of your context is looking at, okay, if you have a family or if you have, you know, certain relationships in your life or certain responsibilities, you can't just set those aside and be like, now I'm going to do business over here. Like you have to do all those things together. And so how do you like figure out how to make those things mesh together. So that's the O. Um, the second O is uh, testing my memory here. Um, okay, it's a pop quiz, everything. right? <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah. Out, Outlined for clarity. So this is really making sure your goal is clear. And it's, so it's similar to SMART goals in that way, where you're going to get really clear and precise about what your goal is. The T is tailored to your lifestyle. So you're both going to like, Make sure that your goals fit in with the life that you have from God. And also make sure that your life is conducive to actually doing those goals. So sometimes you have to do things like go through your house and get rid of some stuff because you're just overwhelmed with life. And it's like you can make it more simple. So like sometimes there's just practical things we can do in our lives. And then the E is etched in your memory, which is basically don't make these goals and then throw them in a drawer and think that they're going to happen. You have to constantly revisit them you have to have systems in place for that so that's what it helps you to do and then the d is developed by providence so that is the idea that like the lord is actually gonna change your goals as you go and that's not a failure that's actually a win and you need to like know that the lord is gonna be active in your life and so if he changes that like allow that to happen. Don't like cling to your goals and be like, no, I said I was going to do this all this time. Like allow for the Lord to be God and don't like try to take control that you don't actually have. So that's the system. Um, it has been completely life changing for me. Yeah, that's super cool. I love all of those principles and I can see the power when, when you bring them together in one sequence. Um, yeah. that's, that's really awesome. So I'm, I'm curious, we're wrapping up here. You are building some really, really cool things. You have, you have a membership, you have a six week program. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you have going on and how we can work with you? Yeah. So <clears throat> my six week program is walking you through biblical principles for business, the foundations of what do you need to do in order to run your business in a way that is like self-consciously Christian, like build it in a way that uh, isn't at war with your faith. And um, you're not like having all these conflicting messages in your head, things from the world and things from your faith over here and from the Bible. And like, you just like, let's clear the air and just like build it all from scratch on biblical principles. So 
That's what the six week program is. I am actually launching my beta program here shortly. So this is the first time I've done it and I'm really excited. I think it's going to be so, so amazing. And then I also have a freebie. You just put the link up. I see. Um, and that is how to keep Jesus first in your business. And I have read so many articles about this that are super fluffy. So don't worry, this is not going to be a fluffy, <laughs> um, like just pray and read your Bible kind of um, resource. This is going to dig deep and go into some really rich stuff about how to actually make sure that Jesus is central to what you're doing. Things like don't rely on your own strength, rely on the Lord's strength as you're going through your business. And um, I get really practical too. So some out of the box things in there. That's really awesome. I'm excited to check that out. Um, and I'll say this. It this is, it seems hard on the outside. I, I actually can't even explain how much easier it is to run a business mm -hmm. in this way, because yeah. you, the, in the, in terms of manifestation and bringing things to you and affirmations, you still, you're relying on yourself or you're under the illusion that you're relying on yourself. That pressure as you begin to scale a business mounts and it gets very difficult to shoulder. I've seen this over and over again, uh, successful entrepreneurs, we're talking seven, eight, nine figure businesses, and they just collapse under the pressure mm -hmm. because yeah. at that size, you have a team of people. And if you have any sort of conscience at all, <laughs> you are responsible for them, not only them, but their families and those paychecks. And if you don't have something who's stronger than you, who's more loving than you to lean on, it will ultimately collapse. It's just a matter of when, not a matter of if. So um, mm -hmm. Rachel, thank you so much for being here. This was a phenomenal episode that I believe needs to get out into the world even more so we can all build with these principles and these truths on our business. So thanks again for being here. Thank you for having me. This was a joy. Yeah, so I, you, the listeners, watchers, subscribers out there, make sure wherever you are, you are subscribed so you don't miss an episode of Harmonious at Lunch. And I wanna leave this episode with the beginning of the book that we are discussing. And that is the first four words of the Bible that I believe are very, very important, if not the most important thing when you are in business. And they are in the beginning, God. Mm. In the beginning, God for everything, for everything that you do. In the beginning, seek God first. He will reveal his purpose for you to use you for his glory and watch what happens. You won't regret it. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Launch. Thanks for joining.